It's that time. City hood click. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Like the door on Like the door on Hood postman. Hood postman. Reporting live. Reporting live. The hood postman, come and check the program. You ain't from the streets, this is something you should know, man. Running from police, got a crook the wood with both hands. Speeding down the interstate, please do not approach him. 40s in the fridge, got the caddy in the driveway. Get all out of my face, I don't wanna violate. Looked up in the mirror and I told myself, why wait? We took this shit worldwide, you only in five states. Came from the four corners with my four quarters. Showed them the style, then they stole on us. Times got wild, then they told on us. Dog, it was hard, but we had to keep it rolling. You ain't gotta ask, you know where to find me I be in the back streets where it get grimy It's just me and Mel, Rennie really looking bright deep I be going hard till I'm in the five seats uh. You know the vibes I'ma do it till I die I ain't never switched sides I ain't never had to tell a lie Let's ride You know the vibes I'ma do it till I die Shout out to the Mailroom Nation. Shout out to the Mailroom Goons. I am Professor Melly Mail, the hood postman. Make no mistakes about that. You can go anywhere in the world and catch a bunch of lies, but you come right here for the truth. Before they had handguns, we had fair ones. Man up. Today, we're going to talk about one of you guys' favorite guy to talk about. We're going to definitely get it in today, and we're going to show that through his efforts and to his to how he applied himself in that pyro nation we're going to show that he set the demonstration he set the precedence and he kind of put the blueprint in place for the rest that's how you got the mob james that's how you got the stanley Pitts. that's how you got the marcus none because of this guy's stamp on the game itself it led into that direction Let's get it in. The streets have been compromised years ago. Loyalty, solidarity, scarcity limited, next to none at all. Even to expect otherwise, it's like holding on to a toxic affair. Your personal feelings isn't a negotiation tool for the advancement in this life we have. The so-called game of life. Understand that today's mathematics... Build, destroy, build us to elevate the mentality of the self and add positive energy to every tribe to build. We must start from the root, which is the knowledge of foundation. We must add to add to the highest peak and destroy is to eliminate and destroy any and all negativity that enter our cipher, our purpose, in our harmony, in our personal spaces. This is what must happen in this life, in this present time, with the things that are going on in this world. When the gangbang entered to the fray, the revolutionary died. Remember that. When the gangbang came into play, the revolutionary died. I am Professor Melly Mel once again. This is not a glorification and glamorization. This is an education. The education in the sense that sometimes we had to go out or down the rabbit hole and go back and understand the history and put it together, give it to it in a perspective way, a respectable way to where you get some from it and you know not what not to do. That's what these, are, these stories are meant for. Let's go back to the foundation. In order to understand all this, we're going to start with the five from the east and the five from the west. The five guys, the super superrogatory. I'm talking about superrogatory in the actions was doing more than the rest of the individuals. And these five individuals from the east, and there was five individuals from the west. The five individuals from the east was Ray Johnson, Ray Skrull Johnson. Power room number one off the east side, Lewis Park. Power room number one, memory well. Uh, 
Brute Levi's, waistline, leather coat. Back then, they used to have waistline leather coats. was very fashionable, very fashionable. Then you got to jump to Herman Jr. From there, you got to jump from Daryl Savage. And then you got to also put in that equation, Jimmy Cash Butler. Jimmy Cash Butler. Then you drop to Mr. Bojangles. Now, you can arguably, you may want to put Icky Dawson in there. You may want to put Bartender. But I'm going to leave that up to you. That's my five. If I jump to the West, I'm going to go put Tam, Baba Louie, Vince, and LB. Those are the five from the East and from the West. And these are the superrogatory guys, the guys that was uh, – and I want to—I don't want to really call them megalomaniacs, but what else can I call them? Because they had the power, they had the clout, the power, and the desire to win in those spaces and be the be the forefront and be the face of those movements or those cadres and put in that work and do all that things that required them to be in that space. Once again, let me give a shout out to the ma to the mail room. We got Kiva in there. We got Slenderoni. We got. Bone Harvester, we got, of course, Marlena Williams, the Postmaster General Sessions with Q on PKB, Devon Cartmore, uh, Mayweather, Ken, Bolo, Soto, Jose, McDon, Lights Out, Cut Wolf. Yes, sir. So in order, let's go back. Now, I'm doing my lifespan, right? I probably had three encounters, maybe even been more than that would put and i'm gonna put it like this here to you my very first encounter i had to be no more than 14 or 15 it had to be around about at because i had been hearing the name putting 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 at this particular time watch the language we refer to them as roosters and i'm not trying to diss nobody i'm just telling you what the language was because we got to always put the language in chronological time because the language don't fit then like OJ like the man said you must have quit <laughs> but anyway so we want to put the right language in there secondly I see people try to get his name mixed up the putting to putting in and they talk about putting in work putting in work is a term that was used in the 90s or 80s, late 80s, early 90s, right? That's where that term, so that term wouldn't fit in the 70s, so his name was Putin, okay? And however that expired and became something else as identity, then that happened. I don't know how it happened, but that happened. Putin, at this day and time, he would be 68, so that put me... I'm 64. That made him four years older than me. My first in county. Me, Baby Crip, Baby Charles, and a couple of others. We had a party. We stand, You know how those youngsters. Back then, we used to walk to parties, ride bicycles to party because we were too young to even have cars. So him, unknown to me, my very first in county, this had to be 74, 75. 74, 75. Now, I had prior to that from 72, I had been hearing the name because Ray Johnson and all the other guys, I had heard all their names. So these were the potential prospective guys that bear watching in this in this uh, world of what we call the gangbang, the phenomenon known as the gangbang. These are the guys that you had to bear watching. They was the guys that was out there. Now, there was guys that came after they, under them, but I'm talking about these 72 guys, these 73 guys, these 74 guys, right? So we at this party. He comes walking up with a couple of more guys. Unknown to me, I don't even know this is him. But my homie, baby Crip, knew who he was. And when he walked up, and this is what he said. He looked at us, looked us up and down, said, you little ninjas must be baby Crips. Watch the language again. The language is important baby crips because that's what you, you don't hear that today you don't hear that today in this time where they talk about baby crips or they call each other refer to one another as baby crips that was the language right there so my other homeboys i noticed everybody got kind of stiffened up and things just went really quiet and the only one that was speaking at the time was baby crip and baby crip was 
unapologetic. He was unafraid. He was one of them individuals that just probably, <laughs> he probably didn't even know how to be afraid. But at this time, when I realized at this point, now that uh, he said what he said to us, now my mind is searching like, well, who is this guy? What is he asking? What is he talking to us like this for? You know what I mean? Because we at this party, unknown to us, this is the pudding that everybody's been talking about. And he just kind of just looked us up and down and just kind of just walked off. And like, we was meaningless. <laughs> like He was not concerned, worried about anything we could have possibly do or done at that moment. And then that's when my homeboy said, man, you know who that was? I said, nah, who? He said, man, that was Putin. I said, Putin? I said, D Putin? Yeah. At that time, I got a little nervous. Got a little nervous. You got to because you don't heard all these stories. And you don't heard all these. Because if you understand who this guy was, I'm going to put him. If not, he had probably been the first guy to fire a shot. He had to be the first guy to be from that side of town. He was a I'm talking about marksman. And most times as he was popping at you or busting, watch the terminology again, busting, you got hit. That's just the facts. You got hit. He was just one of those guys that just was very well, you know what I mean? He brought a unique set of skills to the table and they used them well. And there was other guys, when you think about the five guys that I named from the West and the five guys I named for the East, they all was was people that was high on the list. High on the list. When I say high on the list, these were the guys that the Crips were looking for on a daily basis. Now, that put us, when my neighborhood said at that time, that put us in a very unique or uh, precarious situation because where we sit, we was the only Crip neighborhood. All Most of the Crips were on Alondra. All the way up from Melanger, starting from pretty close to Gardenia, all the way back up to to where Long Beach pick up at Atlantic. Those were the Crips. All of them. We were the only ones on Rosecrans. So we were constantly following or getting into it or these people was coming across. So putting for whatever reason, he spent a lot of time on the east side. An enormous lot of time. So we got very familiar with who he was and, and what he was about. When Ray Johnson, February the 9th, he gets stabbed. February the 10th, he rests in peace. My condolences to his family. Rest in peace, Ray Johnson. No disrespect to his family. I'm just mentioning in the story. Hope all his family, Russell, uh, P, I don't know if he, we, his sisters, everybody. Shout out to them. Salute to you guys. I appreciate you guys allowing me to speak about your brother and not become, not look at it as I'm doing something out of malice or doing something out of ill content. Uh, he lost his life senselessly. There were so many loss of life on both sides. There are no winners in these equations, in these situations. But again, once again, when I tell you, the death of the it was the death of the revolutionary. So we had no revolutionary mindset. Our mindset had became uh something new, something that was uh introduced to us by God knows where. I can't say where it came from. He introduced it. I bought people like to refer that Raymond Washington was the first one, but I think it happened somewhere way down in the deep laboratory in the science building, probably way out in Cambridge. Where where these big 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 universities where these guys experiments with different situations scenarios whether whether it's disease whether it's playing on society whether whether it's creating drama in society I think that a lot of this stuff is created by somebody else that's just my opinion on it you don't have to take it so Ray was um, lost his life right so quickly things start to escalate and escalate. So the next year, this is by 75, right? So we skip 74. We go to 75. Because 74, I was at the party. We go to 75. There's a game 
between Compton High and Dominguez. Compton High and Dominguez. Usually those games were very rival. They was very tough games. Compton had a pretty good football team. So Dominguez didn't stand a chance in, in the football game. He scored one side, and, and, and it was, was so different or unusual about this is, is that the, the Crips was actually on the blue side. Compton High was a blue school. Dominguez was a red and gold school. Compton High was blue and white. Dominguez was red and gold. So if you you play football in the stadium. Compton High actually had a stadium. So me and my partner Don, we actually went to Dominguez. So when they we went up there, we walked up there to the game. Right, we got on our honchos, our Pendletons, or whatever. We got our khakis on and our croaker sacks at the time. Got our brownies in there with a with a screwdriver covering up the brownie in the back pocket. So we go on the Compton side because that's where all the rips are at. Right. We over there, so we say, man, let's go on the Dominguez side. Man, ain't them cracking over here. So, but during this time, you got to understand, it's 75, the Grandies, the Boot Hill Apartments, and I don't know at what point did they close, but always remember this, that apartment buildings are always very transitional. You know, the guys that grew up in neighborhoods and communities, homes, they were still there, but a lot of the guys that was in the Grandies, the Grandies was... Focus on real hard by the Compton Police Department. So during that time, a lot of them were, were placed in youth authority. A lot of them was in YTS. A lot of them was actually in prison. So the numbers on that side of town was kind of down. So when we crossed to the Dominguez side, we get over there in the stands. We over there chilling. But our mistake came is when we came down and walked through the tunnel and went to the back of the stadium. When we got to the back of the stadium, that was Puddin', that was Herman Jr., that was Icky, that was just all, all these fire, that was just, oh, I can't even name all these people that was back there. Some of them I went to school with them, some of them knew them, some of them knew me, but right when I turned and was getting ready to like <laughs> hit a U-turn because I, I realized the mistake I made, right? And my boy Don, he realized, and before I could say anything to him, Puddin' say, hey, Herman, we got two of these baby rips right here. Again, he's used that term, baby crips, right? And before I could look over Don, Don, boom, he was out of there. So now I'm looking like, okay, I got a break, but I don't want to break the wrong way because I didn't even see which way he went. He just left me, left me. And before I could, when I looked around, his fist came across my jaw and glazed my jaw. And that's when I just faded off, bam, took off, ran. I'm a firm believer, a good run be the best stand any day. And we dealing with Putin, that was a good day for me. <laughs> just keeping it honest, keeping it a buck, keeping it 100. Was not finna stand there and deal with this guy because this guy was ruthless. He was indelible. He was impetuous. Impetuous mean he was without care or thought when it came to following would he believe in how he if he cared anything about the opposition or anybody that was from opposing side? He had he was no nonsense in that regard. And uh, so I get away. Right. So I get away. You be in blood nation. I get away and we go. But we hear about this party. We hear about this party. So we go back. This time I go back and I get that. God damn it. Well, it wasn't called, it was called a Roscoe or, or, or I think Roscoe, what were they calling Roscoe's? Yeah, we'll stick with Roscoe. Pick up the Roscoe, jump on the bikes, we get on the bikes, so we're going to go ride to the party. The party was on our beauties. At the time, our beauties was over in the area, it was known as Treetop. Now, back then, it was nothing. It was nothing over there. On the other side of the crayon was Fruit Town and maybe the Cedar Prox was over, over the way. But over there, we had Ronald Mosey, Timothy Mosey, Frank Logan, Tony Logan, uh, Jeffrey Edwards. They were all claiming Luda's Park, but they lived over in the area, which I'm telling you about. They lived over there, but they all claimed Luda's. At that time, most of the pyros in the city of Compton, if you weren't from Fruit Town or you from the West, the rest was claiming Luda's. 
That's just the facts. That's how Luther's Park got so huge. It got so big. A lot of those subsections like M, a lot of those guys was Luther's Park before they was M. A lot of the guys that came up, they was Luther's Park before they was anything else. Um, the Lime Hood's a little bit different because they came on a later generation. But most of the guys that was in the city of Compton, because you had Washington Street over there with Shamrock Mill, then you had Hollywood, of course, they came out. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, most of the guys came looters. That's just the fact. That was their, that was the motherland. That was the, 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 the turf. That was the house that uh, Ray Johnson built. I'm going to put it that way. That was the house that Ray Johnson built. So we go to the party, right? When we get to the party, as soon as we get to the party, they it's already fights breaking out. Boom, 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 fights breaking out. We hear the bussing, boop, 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 bussing going on, right? So we we tuck. I ain't got time to try to figure out what's going on, what's happening, who busting, or none of that. I was in a position to just turn around and dash off instead of getting into something that I can't see what's going on, who is who, what is what. I didn't want to be a part of that. So the next day when I get to school, that's when I start hearing the noise. I think that was 1975. 1975, Tam had been lost at a, at a party. Tam was lost. Uh, also, Robert Earl was shot. Robert Earl was from the spook town, his side of the game. Um, there was a few people shot that night, but Tam lost his life that night, unfortunately. Unfortunately. To some unforeseen circumstances, and, you know, it just it's sad to talk about, but at the same time, those things are what they are and what they are. By this time, Putin is going on a rampage, a complete rampage. He's hitting anything and everything. This is when Putin was pulling up at the Red House, jumping out. He pulled up on Spring Street, where we all lived at, jumped out. This is when he, when Chili Pimp, my homie Chili Pimp that came from Chicago, he was a Blackstone Ranger. He used to wear the black fedora with the leather jacket with the belt around the tie in the front. And, you know, had that gangster, had that gangster hat lean, putting crack one off. Bah! And went through the fedora and put a part down his head. Chili Pimp was jumping up and down, screaming. He was irate. He was irritable, discontent, everything. You could, I couldn't understand nothing he was saying at this time. But when he pulled that hat out, that was the funniest thing. I didn't, I, I mean, you know, I tried not to hold it. I tried to hold it in. Robert Thomas Duck, Roy Scott, uh, Johnny Jones, IB, Ivan Brooks, Tiger McClure, uh, Glenn, Darnell. A bunch of people was around when this stuff happens. A bunch of people from that oak side. And Chili Pimp, because Chili Pimp used to have that baby. He, called, he used to call it a baby cannon. He called it a baby cannon. All it was was a uh, a shotgun sawed off to the lowest part you could saw a shotgun off. I thought it was quite dangerous. It looked it kind of dangerous. It didn't look safe at all to me. Just my take on it. The myth of the man, the legend of Putin. So Putin at this time, and the reason why I said he set the president, he set the groove, he set the, the machine in motion because a lot of his missions he did by himself. He didn't have nobody riding with him or doing none of this stuff. He was just, man, the, the loss of Tam, I think Putin, Putin and Tam probably was like brothers more than anything. And the loss of Tam sent him on a spiral and a tailspin where he he just lost it. And he was gunning. He was gunning. He was coming. He was coming to all sections that he can attack and all people, AC and Putin, bought the P to the east side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. So he was on a rampage, man. It was no stopping him. And that was the third time my encounter with Putin. And any other time after then, I knew that if he was around, I was going the other way. Like I say, this guy was four years older than me. He was uh, more advanced in what he was doing. And he was, man, he was straight, man. He he was always hitting people in the ankle, the butt, the, the knee or whatever. <laughs> 
he was hitting his targets. I don't care how far you was way off. You think you hit a corner and got away. He was on it. He didn't miss his man. And, 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 and uh, it's sad how some people, you know what I mean? Because here's the thing with me, right? I, I don't heard these stories about putting what they say he told or whatever. But here's my thing, right? I have never seen no paperwork. And I'm not going to take nobody's word on nobody unless I read the paperwork for myself and I get a full understanding because I comprehend really well, really well. So, therefore, I'm not going to take no sidewalk critic, no naysayer, or somebody to just walk up and say, hey, man, that dude, is, I'm, I'm just not doing it because the streets, the streets ain't made for everybody. That's why they created the sidewalk. You know, and Bob, you heard it from Bob Louis. What did Bob Louis say? Bob Louis said something very profound when he said it, and 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 he and he meant it when he said it, and it was it was quite it, it was so on point, it's so poignant. Let me give it to you. This question. was Bob. What are most of these hood comprised of when you look at them in in totality? Man, for everybody who's listening, please don't forget this. In all gangs, no matter where you from. All right, it's so always gonna be a short few that lead everybody, give them strength. But remember this, baby: gangs, gang members, and gang banging. It consists of twenty-five percent serious motherfuckers that's really doing it, and seventy-five percent cheerleaders. Which one are you? Lock the door. That's what Baba Louis said. I thought he was so on point with that. That was so accurate. That was so necessary for him to say that because the five guys that I named from the East and the five guys the same from, from the West, those were the 25 percent. Those were the serious guys. Those were the serious guys that didn't play. And there's some other guys in there. You could put Yellow Ice in there. You could put Little Nate in there. And and on the east side, like I said, you could add Bartender and Hickey Dawson in there. And and I'm just naming the older guys, the older generation. Of course, Marcus and Mob James and and Stanley Pitts, they had their lane as well. They those and, and Donald McQuiller, Randy McQuiller, and there's others, right? But I'm just trying to focus on these 70 guys because it's important to understand these 70 guys. And the 70 guys, they were so perfection that in 1976, we lose Salty. Salty was on the street. I can't remember the name. I think it was Dwight. I think he lived on Dwight. And they pulled up. He was outside washing the car. He had the rivy air. They pulled up. And they had already knew who they wanted to go get. And they went after him and they got him. You understand? Because they knew exactly how to hurt the Crips. And they wanted to hurt the Crips as much as the Crips hurt them. Because when they lost Tim, the Crips hurt them. So they wanted to extend that hurt back over to the Crips. And that they did. And after then, that's when the city went haywire again. The city of Compton went boom. It was like... Uh, uh, an implosion, like somebody dropped a nuclear bomb in the city of Compton. It was back and forth, back and forth. There was times where everybody would meet up at Wilson Park, which is in on the other side of my neighborhood, in the Midtown side, with Killer Wayne, the, the sexy Killer Wayne Turtle, and uh, Killer Bray, Heavy Head, Pinwright, New York, and all those guys from that side. They would come in Wilson Park, and all the Crips from Compton would meet up there, and all the park, and they'd get out, they'd fight. Right in the park. They have a fight right in the park. I'm going to do one on the Crips, too, because I'm going to give you the five guys from my side or town and then the five guys from the um, Grandy side of town that I believe that belong. They had that same or in that same wheelhouse, that same megalomaniac type of attitude, that same superrogatory type of thinking, the indelible, impetuous type of individuals that became mercurial, mercurial meaning unpredictable, all of a sudden temperament that you couldn't just put your hand on when these guys would explode. They were like ticking time bombs. I even had one home, but I can't talk about it. I can't tell you the name, but I really believe that he was an actual serial killer. 
that's just you know, and, and and he's still in right to this day, but we'll talk about that another time. Right now, we focus on putting time for our rule. Now, putting when all that stuff erupted and all that stuff, and then they alleged that putting told and all this stuff, and you know, but come to find out somebody else did it. And, and I'm not here to divulge all that because that's not even necessary. We don't know what was the circumstances and why that was put out there like that. But I do know this, that a lot of stuff that was said about him was said after he died. What was it? May? Was it May? I think it was May in 2006, May 12 or something like that, that Putin actually died. So he was hooked up with the girl over the death row. And uh, what was her name? Jewel. She said some things, too, but. I want y'all to listen to what she said. I don't believe her, but I want you guys to get a bar of what she said. Let's see what she said, and then we'll deal with the rest of it. Let's see how it, how it go. Let's see what she had to say. I had went to jail for shooting this nigga named Putin who started the blood gang. And he started the blood gang in California. So I had a lot of niggas wanting to kill me after I shot dude. But they don't know it was self-defense. Because he was beating me up and he was very violent and jealous. And he broke my wrist and uh, beat me up pretty bad. So I end up, <sighs> he pulled a 10 millimeter HK on me. So I just prayed to the Lord because, you know, I'm from the church. And I was like, Lord, give me the strength of Samson. He said it was right after I recorded Woman to Woman for the Murder with a Case soundtrack. And he said, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill your son. And then I'm going to kill myself. And I was like, oh, my heart got the beating. You know, you feel like. So that's enough of that. I don't really particularly care for this lady because, and here's the reason why. Putin was the man he was all that time, right? For this lady to come sometime years after he's gone to tell this story right here on a on a on a platform, to me it it was it was like a it was like like she was a performing for a performance like hot 10 like fiddler on the hot 10 roof or something like she was in the stage play her whole thing to me was like a performance versus her like she was auditioning for a play or something that's just what it came across as me now why she waited so long to say this or that about this man when you was supposed to have been that man's woman i have no idea i can't because she's no longer here as well so I'm not going to I'm not going to throw, you know, kick mud all on her and, 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 and drag her down the, the rabbit hole herself. But what I will say, I don't necessarily believe what she said. I don't believe her account. Um, I think that this guy was just something special out in that field. And he was a ladies man. <laughs> don't get it twisted. A lot of ladies love that dangerous dude. Him, Jimmy Butler. Bartender, all the ladies love them dudes. Jimmy was just as dangerous too. Jimmy Cash Butler became real good friends with Jimmy. You know, Jimmy like even though we, we was like young Crips, Jimmy would spend time with us because Jimmy was like five, four, four, five years older than us as well. You know what I mean? These guys would actually sit down. You imagine sitting down with Jimmy Cash Butler and he explaining you his position on why he does what he does and all this stuff, you know, it, it just was, it was just honorable to me looking for my water. It was just an honorable situation. Oh, here we go. And uh, so, but as for the jewel lady, now I don't heard some stories from some certain ladies, you know, say Putin was a womanizer, but Putin, Putin had a lot of ladies. But what I will say about all these ladies, right, a lot of these ladies that went with some of these gangster dudes, that when they left this dude, they wind up going over there to the Crips. Or the the, dude, the ladies that dealt with the Crips are wind up going over there with them. That even caused even more confusion in the ball of confusion that was already occurring. That caused even more confusion. So, once again, 
I believe Putin set the president. I believe I believe Putin put the blueprint down for the rest of the peace to follow. I believe that they all looked up to him the way he demonstrated his skill set and way he went after certain individuals. I believe they all use that as, as like a bullet point or a blueprint to follow in order to initiate what that gangster was going to be. He set the bar high. And they, don't get me wrong, they had somebody on the crip side do the same thing. So it's not a one-sided deal. I'm just giving you this version of that because people have been asking me to talk about Putin. So here we are. We're talking about Putin. And Putin was so elusive. Man, I think they should have called him the ghost. They should have called him the ghost because, man, this dude can pop up and disappear with the rest of them. You will see him and then you wouldn't see him. You know, or he'll pop up and the next thing you know, he out of there. And he would pop up and had a little smushed grin on his face. No, he had you. No, he had you. And it's just like a thief in the night. Boom, disappear. I know he surprised Tookie. Surprised the heck out of Tookie. Over there on Almond Street. Went over there behind Zorba's. Shot him. Tookie didn't expect that. He didn't see that coming. That never even entered his mind. That, never, that wasn't even in his wildest dreams. But that shows you the willingness and the audaciousness of boldly, surprisingly effort to achieve that hit, that goal, that 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 uh that release or to even the score, so to speak, to even the score. So I'm saying all this to say this to you guys. We should get out this perpetual stupor that we in, that we continue to go back and forth based on red and blue. CK is color man killer. BK is black man killer. How we continue to wind up in that cycle and how it has escalated to where it is now, to where the streets died the moment everybody got on the internet. The youngsters are on the internet holding up blowers, waving and talking about what they're going to do. They no longer live in Compton. They live in uh, Rancho Cucamonga. They live in Paris. They live in Lake Elsinore. They live in Emmett. But they'll go to Compton. They'll get on the internet and say, we outside. We right here. Where y'all at? You know, we on such and such street. And, you know, people get on the internet. In other words, they go play with these games, these uh, games like Halo. They really become these characters on these games and, and Fortnite and so forth. And they really become these characters. They practice all their tactics and they use all them games to study, to show their self-approval in this so-called gang life. And then they go demonstrate it in the physical life. So this is not for play. This is for keeps. So I'm telling you guys, we got to start educating our people. We got to start improving on our culture, culture uh, responsibility, culture competence, and become value focused as a people as we try to go get beyond the margarine of being gang members. Once again, the death of the gang, the gang member caused the death of the revolutionary. We need to get back to that revolutionary mindset. Because that's when we were together. That's where we were in harmony. That's when we was doing things that was working overall for the whole entire collective of the people. Let's get to some questions. I know I don't talk for quite some time. So let's get some questions. Let's go in. What we got? What we got? Sleepy. Uh, what's that? Sleepy Rivera. The dope going was the first truce. Let's see. That made money together. Yep. Uh, let's see. Do you follow, do I follow the BET Savage story? Yeah, I already did that. Uh, yeah, it's still been going on. They coming up with new evidence and stuff. Yeah, you're right. Dangerous. It was dangerous and deadly. Yeah, yeah. So anybody got any questions? Dude? Compton Girl, what's happening? This is the great story, Professor. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, you know what? I love telling these stories. But at the same time, I don't want to get people the wrong impression because people will take these stories and twist them 
and 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 they'll construe it as that I'm trying to promote something other than what I'm promoting, and that's not what I'm doing at all. Like I say, this is not a glorification. It's not glamorization. This is an education. Sit your sons down. Sit your daughters down. Now the girls are more active than the guys nowadays. That's just the facts. Pastor Bia putting never went to. You know what? I, I you know I heard that, but I'm I don't know. You know that lady spoke about that on the on the on the thing. You know what I mean? That he was like afraid to go to prison, but I can't say that. I wasn't going to even let her get to that part of where she started even talking about that. That's just how much respect I had for the man of who he was, who I knew he was and what I knew he was capable of doing. I saw his demonstration. I saw how he got out. So there's nothing, nothing that anybody can come in and say, because here's the thing. I went to their schools. I went to Whaley and I went to Dominguez. I wasn't hiding. I was right there in plain sight. Now, they had the opportunity to do anything and everything they wanted to me, but they, they let me be. There was occasions where I had to be, you know, I had to defend myself, of course, but they, I, I, I knew Stanley Pierce. I knew Donald and, Ronald, uh, Donald and, 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 and uh, Randy McQuiller. I knew Bobby Wesson. I knew Diamond. You know, I knew fire. I remember when Marcus, when the Marcus and Jeffrey Juan Dick and fire, they first caught their first um beef. I think that had to be around about 73 or 74. Maybe 74. And they went to YA, you know. And we probably didn't see him back then. It was giving you five years for a Y. So he probably he was 74. So he, he probably came back at like 79 or 80. Lamont Richards, you seen gangster gold. Never seen a gangster gold rat. I'm sure there's plenty of them, but I, what I'm seeing, listen, Lamont, that's not for me to make that difference. There it is, there. Since you say, let his dad rest in peace. You're right, Cynthia. We gotta let him rest in peace. But uh, you know, so many people say so many things about it. But what I'm telling you and anybody that I don't believe it. That's just me. Now, would anybody else believe or whatever their assumptions is or their conclusions is, then that's on them. I'm not gonna say what you believe. I'm not gonna say what Bobby Louie believe. I'm not gonna say what anybody believe. It's just when I go. When I when I go do the research and read the different uh, history and try to go into do Google searches and search names and all that different stuff and try to pull uh, Michael Fish and, and, and film and stuff like that and try to read stuff and try to get a full understanding. Sometimes it don't line up with what the people saying on the streets. It don't. It just don't line up. Right, let the man rest. He's a legend, and some stories do not need to be told because he ain't here to tell their part. Big up, Melly Mail. So, I get that part, but at the same time, I do what I do. I'm looking at it from a journalistic point of view. And once again, I'm not here to demean or, or make anybody look bad or feel bad or none of that. You know, if anybody feel that way, I can apologize. But I'm not that's not my point and that's not my position. Okay, Cynthia, right on. Rock fresh, right on.
He got what? Healthy complications. OG Steve, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. You know, I be wanting people to, to come on and speak from their personal point of view. You know what I mean? I have my point of view and other people have their points of view, you know, but sometimes they don't want to speak or maybe our schedules don't line up or just, you know, because nobody, we can't, we can all assume that nobody's going to say anything about anybody. But at the same time, when somebody's a legend or somebody did so much in the city, that name is going to come up regardless of whether I talk about it or they talk about it or the next guy talk about it. But one thing about Professor Melly Mel, I'm going to put it in the right perspective. I'm going to put it in the right framework and I'm going to show respect to the family. So, and that's where I roll. Did I see the education of Sonny Carson? No, what is that about? You're right, Cynthia. People do say anything when somebody ain't here to defend themselves. That's why that lady, I didn't believe that lady. That lady, Jewel, starts saying some of the stuff she said, like putting passed away in 2006. She did it a year ago, maybe a year ago, right before she passed. So that in itself, like I say, it seemed like a, a audition for a play, the way she was speaking, you know, like she was campaigning for something. I don't know. Oh, it's a black exportation shooter, then a, a squabbler. Okay, got it. So. Sonny Carson was cold. Yeah, I know, Cynthia. I know, I know, Cynthia. I, I'm just, you know me, Cynthia. I'm, I'm going to protect those who need to be protected. That's just what I do. You know, nobody can come tell me nothing about nobody. Now, if they do, I might hear it, but at the same time, I'm going to throw it in the receptacle or in the wastebasket because I know that it is coming from a, a place of envy, jealousy, and hate. Most cases, like I say, envy can hide in support. Jealousy can hide in, in, in um, I forget what I said about that, but yeah, hate can hide in love. And jealousy can hide in compliments. That's what it is. Jealousy can hide in compliments. Envy can hide in support. And hate can hide in love. Yeah, I'm glad you cleared that up. Yeah, right on, Cynthia. I appreciate that. I, I mean, you know, because here's the thing, right, Cynthia? I don't believe that lady. That lady was saying stuff like from 2006. She had from 2006 all the way up to, to, to 2000. When did she pass? 21, 20? She had right before then, she said what she said. That don't make sense to me. Everybody looking for clout. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Cynthia. Like I say, the way she did that, it was like she was doing a, uh, uh, she was auditioning for something. That's just my take on it. Everybody know that when that man showed up somewhere, everybody got quiet, everybody got nervous, and everybody was looking around. That's just the facts. There you go. There she go. I ain't, I ain't gonna sit up here and say that somehow I challenged him or wasn't, wasn't afraid when he came, when he showed up at my face. I'm gonna keep it buck and keep it a band. Like I say, a good run will be the bad stand any day. And if you want to be foolish to stand there and let a bunch of people kick you, stump you, beat you down and all that, that's your business. That ain't my business. That ain't what I do. I'm a great deal smarter than that. Yeah, they do.
I heard a couple of stories, you know, people say, you know what I mean? Like they had some account. I said, man, listen, dude, you ain't had no encounter with that man. That man go that you just saying anything. <laughs> Not that dude right there. <laughs> like I say, most cases and most scenarios, he did his stuff by himself. I seen it. <laughs> not something I heard, not something not somebody told me, and none of that. I fought, saw it, witnessed it with my own two eyes. She was fantasizing? Yeah, that could be it. Rest in peace, Pudding. But you guys heard my five, right? My five East Side guys. I'm going to give it to you again. Ray, Herman Jr., Daryl Savage, Cash, which is uh, Jimmy Butler, and Bo Jangles. Now, somebody else five might be different from mine, but I'm talking about 70 guys, 71, 72, 73 guys. On the west side, it was Putin, uh, Vince, of course, Tam, Putin, Tam, Vince, Baba Louie, and LB. Those five. Those are the five. Those were the superrogatory, the guys that took took the action and required a great deal of uh, uh, of, of people coming together and trying to figure out what their moves was going to be. <laughs> you know, trust me, man. When I tell you, people wanted that savage. That savage, that name speaks for itself. The name, just think about it. savage. That name speaks for itself. Yeah, that, that name speaks for itself. Yeah. But anyway, any more questions before I get up out of here, you guys? I appreciate you guys coming in. Thank you, Cynthia, for coming in and, and supporting me on what I just said. I appreciate that. Tell Lamont, peace to him. Uh, you know, I do feel, you know, I feel his passion. I understand what he mean when he said, you know, it, it, I'm not, you know, I definitely get it. I definitely get it. I definitely get it. And if he ever feel like he want to talk, that'll be, I'll be more than happy to come sit down with Lamont. You know that. Tell him that. Or any of your homies on Soul Train, man. But no gang members on no Soul Train. <laughs> but no gang members. Uh, get, uh, let's see. Put uh, Mr. Gavin on the time out there. Train room, man. There you go. That's my guy right there. <laughs> train. What's that, bro? 1135 section. Man, thank you, Train. I appreciate it, man. You know I grew up over there, man. I grew up on 135th and Avalon. So part of that is part of my history as well. I, I went from Aprilo and uh, a Compton Boulevard to 135th and Avalon, from 135th and Avalon to Fruit Town. And all these stuff, just think about it. All these stuff and all these different choosing in the neighborhoods and become part of cadres was really based on addresses. And the neighborhood and, and whoever decided to pick what team you was going to be part of. You know, somebody just like went and picked the team and next thing you know, you own it. You ain't signed up for the team or none of that. You just know somebody just placed you on the team, you know, because of geographical locations and addresses. Speak on fire. I went to skate. I went to school with Juan Anderson. Juan Anderson, that's fire right there. We'll talk about fire sometime. 
He said, okay, right on, Cynthia. <laughs> right on. Tell him I'm waiting. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. See, because he can give an account and a passionate account and, and a real in-depth about his dad that nobody else can give because that's his father. That's his father. And I respect that. No, most of the black families lived on the west side. It wasn't until after 60, after 65, and then predominantly 68, predominantly 68 when most of the people started moving on the east side of Compton, mostly. But yeah, I, I think Cynthia and them, uh, Cynthia could probably give you a better accurate date when they moved on the east side of Compton. But she'll tell you, like I'll tell you, most of the when we moved there in the home that we moved in, there were nothing but white people. Ed Huncho, or the True Tribes of Problem back in the day. The T Tribes are relatively new. In the sense, what I'm saying that the gangs I'm talking about were in 70 gangs. Treetop came out sometime in the 80s, late 80s. Late 80s. Oh, east side of Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mostly down in the, in the central corridor is where all the way down central, all the way down to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. There was a lot. Of, that was the, the black Mecca at the time on the east side of Los Angeles, Sleepy. You're right. You know, so it, it, when, when you're doing these stories, right, you have to do it in a way that is like complimentary. Uh, not too revealing, not not disrespectful, but at the same time, if you know there's a story that you can't do, don't do it. Don't do it. Because I can talk in a particular way that is not offensive. I don't I don't I'm not gonna, you know, belittle main or put anybody down. I'm just not. Did I know Big Hook from Nutty? Now how old would he be? Oh, yeah, I know Hook. That's my guy. That's my guy. Me and Hook was in the field. What I'm talking about, man? Me and Hook was in. Me and Hook was together. <laughs> he tell you. Yeah, I know Hook, man. Shout out to my guy, Hook. No, because you got to understand that all the games that came blood, right? Whether it's the Brams, whether it was the Outlaws, whether it's the Bounty Hunters, whether it's the Swans, all them wasn't buds back then. They was just anti-Crip. They just didn't like Crips. The blood thing didn't come to, it was formulated like, well, white, uh, Bob Louie put it in his book how they bought the Bonnaroo and all that stuff and Johnson and George for San Diego. They formulated the blood in YTS as a unification to bring them together under one umbrella. So if you got the Swans, you got the Brims, you got the Outlaws, and you got the other anti crip gangs, the Bebop Watts and, and, and whatever, or the uh, and the 8 9 families, the Family Wood family, they all anti crip. Wouldn't it make sense to, to create something the way you can? They used to have such a unification. In the bloods, and that's what made them like really, really look great. Come together when they created the unification. Now it's all distorted, ripped apart, and and nobody could trust one another. Like, you know, like where I grew up at, we were never, 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 never at odds with any Crips, right? But the Crips were so close proximity of one another, they just start beefing with each other. And then we all know what happened with the death row thing. And then that created the divide over there because a lot of favoritism and stuff, you know. K 
can I get the first five hoods? Well, it, it would definitely be the West Side Piru first, number one. Secondly, uh, Piru's uh, uh, East Side, then Fruit Town. And then I would believe it would be out of Cedar, Campanella, somewhere in there, those. And, oh, I can't leave out Hollywood, too. I can't leave them out either. So as for the Crips, it'll be the Carver Parks, the Mona Parks, Oaks Park, uh, the Grandies, of course. Uh, let me see what would be the fifth one. Um, uh, the fifth one would be kind of hard because it'll be tossed between Midtown because Midtown came out after Oaks Park. So, um, yeah, that I would have to think on it just a little bit more. Yeah, because I remember when Oaks Park was fighting the U.S. boys. Spud. I remember a Spud, but I can't picture his face right now. He looks Jamaican. <laughs> You know, I went to school with Ricky Mooney. Those see Ricky, the Ricky Mooney's and and the Zach Moseys and the Kenny Pokes and the, and the Ricky Pitts. Ricky Pitts used to have his leather jacket draped over the Anthony. To well, the Anthony Toes was a real game banger. Donald and Randy McQuiller, those were real gangers. But the other guys that I named, I looked at them as more like players. You know what I mean? They was down. And they did what they did, but they there was a section of them that were just, you know, they came to school all suave and, you know, chasing the girls. They were more like players. But then when you had the Anthony Toes and the Donald McQuillan, Wendell McQuillan, the Stanley Pierce, the Marcus Nuns, the Fires, those at Diamonds and the Bobby Wests, them were the gang bangers. Them dudes were serious right there. They were serious about the business, you know. They were serious. Sir, I never thought I'd see Pyro kill. Yeah, yeah, that was that was different, bro. That was that was different right there. The Elms, the Elms was. I know the Elms were around, but to me. For me, right, and I, and Cynthia could, can, could make me if I'm wrong, but most of them, the twins and Stanley and all them, and Herman Jr. and all them, Willie Teen and all them, Volcano, all them, them dudes are from Luda's Park, man. It's the generation up under them that started claiming Am. Lil Raymond, I, uh, Lil Raymond, they was all from Luda's Park. Every last one of them. So it's generations up under them that start claiming something different. They start claiming it was Am Lane. And then it became Am Street. Based on generational differences. Yeah, it was unthinkable, man, you know. You thought that the nine deuces and the eight nines and the bebops and the circuit cities and all those cats over there in that section would never be against one another. The swans and the bounty hunters, now they can't stand one another. They can't stand one another, Aldrich. Lil Raymond is doing well, man. Lil Raymond is, 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 is he's working. He's man, Lil Raymond is really a genius when it comes to computers. He's built he's a website builder and all that stuff, and he's building websites for the government now. Really, I'm really proud of Lil Raymond. And when I talk to him, man, he's he's adding to his education, he's adding certifications, and uh he 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 made well in the high six figures. He had you when you talk to Lil Raymond, you would not even ever believe that he was ever a gang member. Just you just won't get that from him, period. Nothing, you know. And and I get it. I get. It. I do get it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was that. That's a touchy subject, Benjamin. That's a touchy subject, and and you know, and here's the thing, and, and Cynthia probably can agree with me on this. There's always been times when a dude would run back. They had some dudes that would run back to their neighborhood and say this, that, and that, and the third happened, right? But the reality of they couldn't face the fact they was humiliated and their feelings was hurt because somebody might have kicked their butt or they. They did something to them that they just couldn't take. So they go back to their homeboys and create this big old story. And then it would infuriate these homies and they would retaliate. That happened a lot. A lot of dudes would go back and lie to their homies about circumstances and situations. And it would infuriate their homies. They would come back, you know, ready. Yeah, I was tight with Big Rebo. You know. That happened a lot throughout game bagging. Oh, Jarvis and Cook Street was definitely around. Definitely around train. 135 has been around a long time. I can't say that the, you know what I mean? I can't say that the 135 has been around a long time, <laughs> bro. Make no mistake. It's just that, you know, when even now that you bring it to my station, Don Turner, Cook Street, and Jarvis Street, Pabru, I remember all that was over there. I got stuck in the eve after dark playing with them people over there. When it used to, but well, it used to be Jeffy's before then because, like I said, I lived on 35th and Avalon. Smitty's liquor store had been there forever, you know. Behind where Vanguard used to be, uh, what was it? The story, uh, Safeway and Fantastic got burned down during the '65 riots. Paru was never no Crips, bro. There was a time when, when Baba Louie talked about Black Johnny came up to Lutus Park, and that's when he was, you know, in, in his version of the story, you got to go get it from him, but, you know, but there was never that. Was the West Five Ruru fracture like the uh, East Side Piru? Did they get into other hoods? I don't know what you mean by that. Mark Law. No, I don't know that guy, Mark. <laughs> now that that would have been the that would have been the ten million dollar question. Did the Crips know what putting? Nobody knew what putting. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. I, I have no idea as to that. I have no idea. You met I told her the other day is he original Lutus Park? I already told her it's not from Lutus Park. Maybe do a segment on trucking. That's fair. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all doing all this, man. Do like train, man. Train, train hit me with some cash. Y'all don't want to hit me with nothing. <laughs> train put it out there. Cut the lonely mill on the third street. Shout out to the speaking of the big homie. Put in rest in peace, man. Train can ask me anything. I'm just asking questions and and y'all y'all want me to answer all these questions, but Hughley's from the one three five, but y'all don't want to super chat her, brother. Bo Jenkins. Do I know I told him more? Of course I know him. He slicks big on me. <laughs> Y'all gonna make slick mad. <laughs> Life's a song worth singing. You know, I know Big Debo, he grew up over in the track new section, and Dre grew up in in the Kelly Park section. But as to whether they claim or not, I have no knowledge of that.
Here we go. Then you got to remember Bodacious and Sockeye, those cats, they was from Mona Park. And then, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, that jumped ship or went on the other side or did that on both sides. There was a lot of that. And sometimes it just was based on who you were lying with and who your relatives was. Now, I think I go live at six o'clock. I've been doing that for quite some time. Oh, he lived on Piru Street, man. He wasn't coming over there. <laughs> That's right, Cynthia. That's right. <laughs> well, I've been over here on an hour. You guys refused to super chat a brother, so I'm going to jump off of here. And let the chips fall where they may fall. You know the vibe. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, share, drop a comment down below. Remember, personal feelings isn't a negotiation tool in the advancement of life. That's just where I'm saying the streets have been compromised years ago. Understand that loyalty and solidarity is scarcely limit, next to none at all, even, even to expect. Otherwise, it's like holding on to a toxic love affair. That's just the nature of that. Shout out to Comedy Girl. Shout out to Benjamin. What does Comedy Girl, what did she say? Awesome show. Good night, Professor. Thank you. Oh, you met King Rat? Okay. Before he passed away. Yeah, King Rat. You know how he got the name, right? Stole that big old chunk of cheese from Compton. Keep doing what you're doing. Respect, man, man, J.S. Shout out to Killer Cali. Shout out to everybody that joined us. Shout out to Cynthia and Lamont, my people. Shout out to King Mike Marsh, Marlena Williams for doing such an amazing job, keeping the chat, controlling it, controlling the flow, keeping the, the trolls out. We had an awesome time. We got some history in. We was able to, to talk about it in a way like grown men and grown women and show some maturity. That's just what we did. We demonstrated maturity this day and I appreciate that you guys continue to grow be good be safe most of all be well as Kenny Wayne Johnson would say going to skating ring partner going to skating ring partner <laughs> let's get up out of here you guys I appreciate you guys for joining me this day and be good, be safe, most of all, be well. Proof of grind all the time, baby. Yeah. Cali Vines, baby. Proof of grind all the time. Music money. Got a dollar sign. Hub City. I'm a street nigga. Streets fuck with me. I'ma keep pushing products till the fans get me. It's Guap off top. Diamond Cordier. That nigga wall won't give a pro bitch the time of day. They see me climbing, they see me, they see me shining, see me. that's hard work, hard work, proof of grinding, new money got me chipping in this 550, I leave bad man and I'm so pretty, I got that tech with me, that's my hater sprayer, go big, grind now, nigga play later, what can I say, I'm addicted to this paper stacking, and I don't talk about it, I just make it happen. Shout out to the Mailroom Nation. Shout out to Mailroom Goons. Marlena Williams, shout out to Cynthia Nunn and Lamont once again. Marlena Williams, go ahead and lock the door because we are gone.